What's up, y'all? We are back. Episode 13, I believe, of the Colorado Rockies Out of the Park Baseball 24 series. And we are here in the offseason 2027-2028. After a disappointment into the last season, we finished third in the NL West. Um, and four games out of a wild card spot behind um, the Diamondbacks, San Francisco, and the Reds. Um, but, I mean, overall, not a bad year. Um, we kind of talked about how there was some internal just regression. Um, pretty much everyone just played a little bit worse. No one really um, played better than the year before. So, um, maybe we overestimated how good some of these guys were, but... Um, now we have a chance to, you know, correct that. So we go into the off season here and, you know, the finance thing is still going on with it's saying I don't have any money. So I had to drop all these budgets down for a minute uh, to be able to offer these guys arbitration. I'm uh, non-tendering Justin Lawrence and Ryan Jeffers kind of mentioned that last episode, I believe. Um, Ryan McMahon, very interesting. Um, I didn't think he was going to accept a qualifying offer or I think I thought he would. I went in and offered him, like, even up to $23 million for one year, and he wants a multi-year deal. So there's a chance we're able to get a qualifying offer uh, draft pick for him. So, and even if he was to accept that $22 million for one year, I would actually be cool with that. Uh, you know, he's a valuable player, like I've mentioned, throughout the save. And, um, yeah, I wouldn't be totally opposed to that. So uh, all our other guys we got back eventually. <laughs> um you know, Senga and Tovar were really, really expensive. That was like 25 a piece at least, I think. So, um, but anyway, let's go through these uh, awards. So, I look at the AL Gold Gloves, NL Gold Gloves. Um, we had Drew Romo at catcher. I would love to get my hands on this Edwin Arroyo. Ugh, such a beast. Um, he wins at shortstop. That's why I mentioned. Um, AL reliever, Andres Munoz, NL. We have Edwin Diaz. Um, Alex Lang finishes, what is that, sixth? Sixth down the ballot. Um, AL silver sluggers, you can see here. Um, and NL silver sluggers, we had one guy. It was uh, Jackson Cheerio out in left field. Uh, well deserved from him. Novak Veen this year. Looks like a... Uh, Got it. Acuna got it over him. Uh, I mean, I I might agree with that. I guess. Uh, whatever. Uh, it's it's a coin coin uh coin flip at the very worst. So, uh, this guy John Cesac, who was the first overall pick in twenty twenty six. I think we like looked at this guy when they drafted him, and I said it was a pretty good pick. And obviously, it turned out okay. Um, you know, he's not even fully developed. He played twelve games, uh, in A ball before being promoted right to the majors. So. And he wins Rookie of the Year. So, I mean, not not a bad start to his career. This dude, David Leone, uh, wins as a catcher slash mostly first baseman, actually, for the squad. Um, I would definitely play him a catcher. I mean, this is good enough to carry that bat. Um, and then we go to manager. We obviously didn't get it. It was the Pirates manager. Um, Grayson Rodriguez wins AL Cy Young. Corbin Burns in the NL. And Kodai Singer gets some votes. Um, last place out of this, but I mean, pretty impressive to have a Colorado pitcher, uh, finish on the ballot for Cy Young. So, uh, pretty cool there. And then, uh, we have AL MVP Aaron Judge, despite playing just 109 games. Uh, he's been insane in the save. Like, he, he hasn't played like a full, he's played like one full season, I guess, but He's led the league in home runs four out of the five years of the save. So pretty cool on him. You know, I'm a Yankees fan, so I, I love to see that. But um, I'd like to see him play a few more games. Anyway, um, NL MVP, Austin Riley, wins. Uh, I guess he's a first baseman now, apparently. Uh, cool. Uh, and then Bregman finishes second. Our uh, top guy was Jackson Cheerio. It will now be moving to right field. We'll go over that in just a little bit. Um, and I guess that was it. Very little surprising. Uh, not going to lie. I thought Veen might get some votes. Maybe Bryant could sneak his way on. Um, but I guess Veen didn't have that good of a year. But 
Anyway, we'll go to arbitration hearings, and we'll see what happens with McMahon here. Uh, Jake Eater, I also, yeah, I did the thing where I canceled his uh, um, contract before it auto-renewed. Is there anyone else on here that I want to do that with? Like James Hicks? I believe they become official in like a day, so. Let's do James Hicks. I don't even know how he wound up on my 40, man. Uh, I guess he's not a bad pitcher, but, you know, I'm not going to hold the spot for him. And then Jeffers will be DFA'd. Uh, Flurry, I don't mind on there. Um, besides that, I think all these guys are cool being on the 40, man. So, McMahon, it looks like he collected free agency, so... We'll get a comp pick for him when he eventually signs, or, you know, we can maybe make a push for him, depending on how things play out here. Um, because I, I haven't recorded in a couple of days, and I've kind of been thinking about how this is, uh, you know, how this offseason is going to play out. We, we have a lot of money uh, that we kind of have to, you know, we don't have to clear it out, per se, but, like, we'd like to have more room to navigate <laughs> throughout the season. So, um, just looking through these international guys really quick. That's a hell of a player, but um, I don't know if we'll be able to get him. But um, So basically, my plan, I love Ezekiel Tovar, but uh, he's so freaking expensive <laughs> for, like, the quality player. He had the one MVP year, and, like, that destroyed his, like, arbitration estimates where, like, he's this, they think he's a 7.6 war player when he's probably not, uh, and he probably never will be again. Uh, I think I think that year. I mean, he had an awesome year. Don't get me wrong, but it was definitely the anomaly throughout his career. He's more of like this one ten to one twenty WRC plus guy, not a one forty six. So um, he's also a second baseman now. He's not a shortstop anymore for me. Um, and you know, the ratings aren't terribly impressive either. So uh, he's a guy I'm looking to ship out. I looked at him right when the off season started. Um, there wasn't even any really interesting prospects, so uh, I might wait on that uh, until we get deeper into the offseason. Yeah, see, now we have $54 million. I hate this game uh, when it comes to that. Um, but you see how much money we have cleared up after this year? Like, steals off the books, Lang, Bryant. Um, you know, really the only guaranteed contract that we have is Willie Adamas, <laughs> which, uh, you know, this is, this is great to have all this flexibility, but you know, we do have to spend this money eventually. So, I mean, Senga will obviously be back and pending some disaster season. Um, but, I mean, we could afford Tovar for another year. I'm, I'm not sure because we, we got all these guys coming up. So, we got Braden Holcomb, more of a third baseman, but um, a guy I'm excited for. And then Brent, Brent Bauckham, who was a second overall pick back in 2025, uh, this is one of those drafts where there was really no one good. Uh, you know, he's a nice player. I think he could fill in for Tovar just fine. Uh, he's made it all the way up to AAA at this point, 24 years old. Um, and this guy, Ben Cripps, who was a 10th round pick in 2026, uh, looking like a shortstop, a really good second baseman of the future. Uh, the bat will definitely play. And um, Kevin Gillen, I guess, whatever. He's not really a guy. Um, then like Derek Bernard, a little bit farther down, he's a guy who's been in my system. He's on my 40 man, but he's not even close to the majors. Um, yeah, then we got some guys in the lower minors like Bautista and, um, who the hell is the other guy? Uh, he must be in my Dominican system. Anyway, whatever. My point is we have a lot of guys I think we can, who could step in for Tovar. Uh, not to mention even Adele Amador, who, you know, had an awesome season uh, in 111 games, only 73 starts, but, um, you know, he's a guy who's making league minimum, not $25 million. So, um, a lot of things to look out for this offseason. Um, you know, we could also make a splash in free agency. I doubt it, but <laughs> just just to the, you know, this season, I think we're out on free agents. I think next year, when, when that money comes off the books for Bryant, um, Steele, and Lang, I mean, that's, what is that, it's 26, that's 42, it's over $50 million coming off the books, so. 
And again, only one guaranteed deal. So, I mean, I'd love to extend my guys internally. I mean, Zach Veen's obviously at the top of that list. Jackson Churio, um, maybe ahead of him, honestly. Um, I love both of those guys, and I'd like to keep them around long term as my, you know, future corner outfield. But um, does he want to do? He would do an extension. Uh, it's a ridiculous amount of money, but he might actually be worth it. So, um, We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that at some point. And what is Veen? Veen wants a lot of money as well. <laughs> Not quite as much, so maybe he's a more realistic option to do. He's also stuck in the corner. Churio can play center. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll come back, you know, with some updates when free agency, you know, gets into the swing, and uh, we kind of go through that. So we'll be back in just a second. Okay, so after all, the dust is kind of settled. Made some offers to some guys. Um, yeah, we're, I think we're pretty much out on any like big free agents. Unfortunately, I would like to do, you know, a save eventually where I actually have some money to be able to throw at some free agents because I think that's fun. But unfortunately, we had thirteen million after I set my development budgets, and I mean, my scouting budget isn't as high as I'd want it to be. Development, you know, that's fine. Thirty million is cool. Uh, that's like the minimum I like to have. For a team like this, and then I need that third team for um for like draft and international, and even that even that's cutting it close. So, um, you know, I, I would like to clear up some budget space. Uh, I'm still you know kicking the tires on this tow bar thing. Um, these are some different. Okay, so yeah, Hendry Mendez was offered to me earlier. Um, this guy's new, Carlos Wrangle, decent. Reliever. Um, Jojo Blackman, yeah. This guy I was interested in, but, I mean, at that point, I think I'm just better better off keeping Tovar and, you know, hoping he turns in, like, this 2026 season or 2025 season again um, for the moment. So, um, I think I'm going to have Tovar play third this year just because he has a better arm compared to Amador. Amador is... Like, has a better range, less arm, so. I'm going to put Tovar at third this season. Um, and then, I mean, we'll probably run back pretty much the same offense. I made a couple minor league deals and some, like, uh, I, I offered uh, Joshua Mears, who had a really good year, uh, an independent ball, 195 WRC+. Plus. I gave him one-year deal. Um, I assume he has options so i'll probably like he'll probably be like a guy I bring up and down whenever i need him but he'll have that 1.3 1.2 million dollar deal um this guy was interesting carter bins uh whatever just minor league catcher uh tom cosgrove i like him as a lefty out of our pen you know a neutral guy you know not the great movement but um he was cheap and that's all i really cared about so he gets an uh, major major league deal. Drew Gilbert, part of Boston's organization the last couple of years, uh, has had a good amount of success up in the majors. Uh, and for some reason, he's a free agent. Um, I don't think he reaches service time. I wonder. Okay, so they actually non-tendered him. Wow. Um, so I'm going to take advantage and try to sign him. It's only a minor league deal with a $1.8 million bonus if he makes the team. Um, and then a couple of minor league guys. This guy was interesting. Connor Brandon uh, has been pitching an independent ball, uh, for most of this save. Let's see. He was a 17th round pick in real life by, by the Mets traded for Yomer Sanchez. And then, uh, he was released and then. Yeah, signed an independent ball, but, you know, he's an intriguing guy. Uh, pretty good stamina, and I think if I throw him in the bullpen, he'll become, like, a really decent reliever. So, um, a guy with options, as far as I can tell. Yeah, it doesn't show up, but uh, he has minor league options, so, you know, we'll, we'll have him to kind of move around when needed. So, uh, I think that's pretty much going to be it for the, like, the offseason. Um you know, unless some kind of trade formulates or um, Hicks, throw him triple A. Um, 
unless some kind of trade comes about. But I mean, we can go look at the trade block right now, I guess. So Jordan Alvarez, that'd be sick. Uh, I wonder how many home runs he would hit in Colorado. I'm guessing they're going to want a good amount. Uh, Jose Ramirez would be an interesting player to pick up. We need a third baseman. Ah, uh, people in their horns. Um, they have. Hmm. If I was like give you my two top pros, okay, I can't actually take that. Oh, well, that's interesting. Okay, so all I need to do is have them eat. How much does he make? Okay, well, I actually think I can get Jose Ramirez here. Um. Okay, I'm going to do this off camera. Uh, and I don't know if I'm going to pull the trigger on it. I think I might. He's a free agent after the year. I don't really care if his defense isn't great. He's going to play third base for me if I get him. But, I mean, he's been a good, not great hitter the last couple of years. But, I mean, it'd be fun to get Jose Ramirez. So, uh, I'm going to look at this and come back in just a second. Okay, so... One of our most valuable pieces here is Jorge Bautista, who has a nice bat. Uh, the eye is concerning. Um, but, you know, he could be a really good player one day, I'm sure. Uh, but he's 19 years old, uh, just made his pro debut this year, and he doesn't really have a defense, defensive position. You know, he's a first baseman, but, I mean, whatever. <laughs> uh, and he had a ton of value, and, you know, he was a scout in Discovery, so this was just like a random guy my scout came across. So I see it as free money. Um, <clears throat> so Jorge Bautista, I shopped him around and a lot of good offers, but this guy in particular, George Wolko, came up and um, yeah, he's an absolute beast. Uh, former 18th overall pick just last year. Um, Already very well developed, probably playing the majors at the moment, um, but more likely like triple A. <laughs> but still, he's a triple A right now, um, and the upside is huge. Extreme fly ball or fly ball hitter, extreme pull. Um, you know th that'll play at third base. I'm I'm cool with that defense there. Um, number forty prospect in baseball, which I think is really underselling this. Um, Dude's an absolute stud. Walked 18% 18 of the time down an A ball. Uh, was clearly too good for that level, but they didn't call him up. Um, you know, Bautista, he's young. He might have a bigger upside uh, than Waklo. Um, but, you know, I feel, I feel kind of cheesy making this trade, so I am going to go ahead and throw in, like, another prospect for them. Uh, he's maybe a little bit higher up in the minors. Not a nothing player at all. Zach Wattis, I actually want to give a chance to, so he won't be the guy, but um, maybe like Kemp Alderman has crushed AAA. I just don't have a spot for him at the moment, so maybe I'll throw him in. I mean, that still doesn't feel like enough. <clears throat> Good on AA. Um, Gavin Klein, former fourth round pick. You know what, yeah, let's throw him in. Uh, Killen, Gavin Killen, uh, really nice player here. Yeah, my scout likes him quite a bit. Um, 23 years old, so still young. So, yeah, I'll throw in these two guys along with Bautista just to make this feel a little bit, um, a little bit better. I mean, I don't know. Bautista doesn't seem like as good of a player as as I think he is compared to what everyone else thinks he is. Um, maybe Waklau. We actually like him a little bit worse than the OSA. Uh, I think, considering that they're okay doing this trade, I think throwing in Killen, who is a really nice prospect, um, you know, I actually don't really want to give him up here, but I, I feel like I should just to make this more fair. Killed a high A um, and struggled a little bit in, in double A, but, you know, uh, a really nice player here. So, um, interesting. What the heck? 
has he really? When the heck was he? When did he have these ratings? That was before I drafted him for sure. Um, so he was once a really highly touted prospect. Um, that was before I took him, but um, so yeah, this may, I guess think this makes a lot of sense uh, for them. So considering that they want Bautista so bad, so I'm gonna complete that trade. So that's our first deal of the off season. Um, and wonder where he went down to. Probably rookie ball. Yep, here he is. So, I'm going to put him in double A just because he hasn't played there yet. Uh, you know, fast track to the majors, of course. He'll be up probably next year at some point. So, very cool. We found our third baseman of the future. I was looking at the Jose Ramirez thing, and I did like a lot of those trades, but, um, you know, it was throwing in him and then uh, the guy we just traded and, like, Amador to eat half the salary to make it work. And uh, Amador does have a ton of value. I'm not against trading him, but... Only because I think he's more valuable on the trade market than he is as a player, if that makes any sense. Like, he's a very good player, but uh, these ratings don't really indicate, like, that he's going to be a stud by any means. Um, also due for a big raise in arbitration, despite not even being an everyday player for the first four years of his career, three years of his career. So, um, whatever. Uh, that's besides the point, I guess. So, um, I think we'll run with this for now. We'll come back, uh, a little bit later in the off season and update. All right. So this trade deeply pains me to do. Um, I have loved Ezekiel Tovar. He's been, you know, he went MVP back in 2024, it's a 2020 or it's a 22 year old, <clears throat> 7.6 war season. Um, but looking at like his overall, you know, career numbers, uh, that was clearly the outlier of the season. Uh, he's more of like a 300 hitter, not a 341 guy. And, um, you know, he walks about 5% of the time, strikes out about 20. Um, you know, only 26 years old. So, like, this isn't – and he plays a good second base too. But, um, you know, the ratings are starting to drop. And really the big thing was with this new extra year of control, we do have him – next season as well but uh after he won the mvp his arbitration estimates have been like way out of this world so <clears throat> 33 million dollars next year even if that's 30 do i think ezekiel tovar is going to put up a season that's worth 30 million dollars uh probably not i think he's closer to probably uh let's see career babbit 362 you know i don't think he's as bad as he was last year but he's probably like this guy, a 3.9 war guy, which is a great player. But um, is that worth $30 million? Um, I'm not sure for a second baseman. But on the other hand, Dansby Swanson, um, I've been trying to get him this whole save because I, I love his defense. 65 infield range, uh, put up a 12.6 zone, 12.4 zone rating last year. By comparison, Willie Adamas put up like a negative two or something. Uh, and even with a bad bat, he still put up a three-war season. So he's kind of like the antithesis to Tovar. I think Tovar will be a better hitter, but I think Swanson's defense uh, is more what this team needs right now, quite frankly. So with this trade, this would push Adamas or Amador over to third, and then the other guy would play second, whatever. And then Tovar would be, uh, unfortunately, out of the picture. Um, but, you know, he's under contract for one more year, $25 million. Um, so he'll be making less than Tovar does. So unless I was a non-tender Tovar, which I don't think I would, even if he was making $30 million, um, I'm still saving money with Swanson here. Um, and I'm getting $11 million cash. Uh, I threw in a bunch of other guys. Uh, Derek Bernard being the, I guess, the key point uh, of the of the throw-ins. You know, he's been... Um, like a topish prospect in my farm system for a while. Uh, he's a second base only guy. You know, pretty good hitting ratings, but um, he's on my 40 man because, you know, he, he, he needed to be added last year. And, yeah, didn't get out of high A last season. So I'm okay giving him to the Cubs. Uh, Birdsong, another guy who's tough to give up. Um, you know, a nice relief pitcher. I wonder if I can keep him by any way. Yeah, now I'd have to throw him in. He actually has quite a bit of value as well, so uh, we're going to throw in him. 
you know, 26 years old, whatever. Uh, if that's what make this, makes this deal work, then we'll do that. And then Joe Rock, who they wanted a lot, so I'm going to throw him in. 27 years old. Let's see what they like him. He's a decent arm. Um, so, yeah, my GM doesn't want us to do this. <clears throat> my only concern is, um, you know, Tovar is very popular, but so is Swanson. So I think they'll just cancel each other out pretty much. Um you know, Swanson's old. There's a chance he declines. He announces to be a thirty age 34 and 35 seasons. Uh, but, you know, as long as he keeps the glove and he puts up like a, you know, an, a 90 WRC plus, which he has throughout, you know, his tenure besides last year. Uh, part of that might have to do with the, the really low BABIP compared to, you know, what he was doing in Chicago. It was closer to 350. So, um, you know, league average bat with uh, amazing defense. That's a really good player. So, it sucks to go with Tovar here, but that's a long-winded way of saying we're going to do that trade. Yeah, and they don't like that, obviously, our fans. Yeah, well, it's tough. But another thing, uh, we did gain like $10 million uh, there, so we have a little bit more money to work with. I think that'll just go into development and scouting, however. Um, oops. Maybe they are go. 32 with our development. Yeah, so there you go. We will add Swanson to the roster. And he'll slide in. The only problem is we lose our leadoff hitter, which uh, I don't really know who's going to hit leadoff now. It'll probably be Domador, I'd say. I don't know why the heck Chris Bryant moved back there. Um... Yeah, we'll probably do Amador, I'd say. He's probably the closest thing I have to a true leadoff hitter. Um, you know, we'll, we'll play with all this later, but um, I like how this lineup looks now. It definitely, um, you know, I want to get Amador in there every day, too, and Adamus fits better at third or second. And, um, I'll probably actually put Amador at third and Adamus at second. Probably do that. Um, but, yeah, look at the, the defenses. Like, this is a way better defensive alignment. You know, with our pitchers, we want to give them every chance they can to, to get more outs. So, there we go. We will probably, uh, you know, go up to around spring training, uh, opening, maybe opening day at this point. Uh, this episode probably getting kind of long. So, um, yeah, we'll be back in just a moment at some point. All right, so this offseason has taken another turn. So we got offered this trade for Jose Ramirez, which uh, I didn't take, but it was like, okay, they are opening to trade in, uh, Jose Ramirez. So obviously I wasn't going to go with Dan Reinwald. But I looked at what they wanted. They really wanted Willie Adamez. Uh I get it. Good leader. Um, and, you know, really cheap for the next two years. As a, uh, as a really quality shortstop. And, um, you know, Jose Ramirez, free agent after the year. I, I understand what they want to do that. I also threw in Jaden Hill to have them eat 50%. Uh, mostly just so that I had some money, you know. This would have uh, brought me to, like, zero on the year or so. Uh, so they'll eat half the deal. Only a one-year thing, whatever. Uh, and Jaden Hill, you know, a former, a former guy I thought pretty highly of. He could still be a good pitcher, but... Um, I've kind of moved on from considering him. So basically this will put Ramirez over at third and Adamez will be shipped out. So um, not, I didn't really plan on doing this, but um, I think it's a fun trade. And, you know, he's a very popular player and everything. And um, Adamez is too, but not quite as much. Um, I just think it's a fun development in the in the series overall. So... Uh, you know, we're going for it, so <laughs> we pick up, um, yeah, that sucks. Uh, I, I I hate losing a leader like that, but, um, yeah, welcome to the squad, Jose Ramirez. So, with that said, he slots in at third, <laughs> so now we have a whole new left side of our infield with Swanson and Ramirez. Um, this is more like fantasy baseball at this point, quite frankly, but... I don't know. We're having fun with it. Uh, Ramirez would honestly be a pretty good leadoff hitter, I think. So that would, yeah, that 
Man, this lineup looks freaking crazy going into the season. I think it's an awesome lineup. So we got like Ramirez, Veen, Churio, Bryant, Betancourt, maybe Blaise Swanson, Amador, Romo, Romo, Amador. Put Blaise in front of uh, Swanson here. Yeah, this is a pretty pretty wild lineup. I like this a lot. <laughs> So let me do my last international scouting, and we are ready to sign some guys. So um, not a ton of guys that really caught my eye. This guy David Mora I like. Um, you know, only a three pitch guy, fastball, curveball, sinker. Not ideal, but um, he doesn't want a ton of money. So maybe I'll go to like two point six. With him, that leaves him to 3.35. Um, Corona is a good value guy for sure. Um, let's do 3 2 with him. And then we'll see, uh, you know, see what happens here. So let's see ahead a couple days. I, I'm very excited for this team. Um, you know, we're kind of, we kind of been kicking the tires. And just kind of running it back. But, you know, let's try to throw a different squad out here. Top five hitters and home runs being ahead of the count. Wow, Chris Bryant's up there. That's cool. Wow, Yankees extended Carlos Rodon. <laughs> My goodness. All right, well, that's, uh, that's shocking. I don't think they'll do that in real life at this rate. But uh, very cool, I guess. All right, so Corona linked his deal. Inked his deal. Linked. Um, yeah, no. Okay, so we got Corona. Um, he's probably the guy I wanted more anyway than the pitcher. Um, yeah, Morta, Morta is going to be pushed uh, a little bit higher, so we'll move on to someone else. We still got $3.2 million left. Uh, Verdugo is a guy I liked for a really cheap. Um, let's go with 400,000. All right, so Verdugo was a guy I liked. Um, Balderas is good just because I, I like having these pitchers. Uh, let's go 400,000 with him as well. And that leaves us with almost 2 million. So um, I like his personality quite a bit Gamino is a guy that I liked let's throw him 500,000 uh, just because he has a lot of pitches uh, that's pretty much it Valenzuela I don't like his personality quite enough Campos eh Try to get a good defender here. So let's go to um, defensive fielding ratings. Who are my good range guys here? Medina. Uh, sure. What does he want? Oh, he wants quite a bit. But outfield range. Aguilar. Ooh. Wow. Holy crap. <sighs> Never mind. 3.4 million for that. I mean, he's a nice player, but I don't think so. I don't think so. How about... Let's go back to the default screen here. Um, I already offered Verdugo, right? Yeah, okay. Well, let's see what happens with these two. And Go day by day here. Verdugo likes the offer. And Gamino. Okay, we're going to have to go higher on him. Let's go 700. There's really not anyone else I want here, so I'm okay um, upping his deal a bit. Baldurus wants some more. Verdugo wants more. Great. Uh, let's go up to a million with him. I don't want to mess around with that.
left off for Baldurus a little bit more too. We'll go to 700. Oh. Go to 800 with him. And then Gamino wants more. 800. Jeez. Alright, well, this is kind of running me up against it here. <laughs> Alright, those guys all like the deals. Alright, dude, seriously? <laughs> I'm gonna. Oh, Ryan McMahon, still unsigned. Uh, I tried to offer him deals at multiple times in this offseason. And he's been a little reluctant to do it. Uh, what is this contract? Shit, do I even need him anymore? <laughs> I, I'd play him at second, and I'd push Amador to the bench again. Man, I would love to get McMahon back, but... I don't know if it's in the cards at this point. You might have waited too long. Can I get him for like a one-year deal? Like one year, eight million? That would push Amador to the bench again, and man, this sucks. You know what? I I, I love McMahon, I do, but we're gonna have to pass. I think we're I think our team's kind of filled up at this point. That's unfortunate. Uh, Verdugo did sign though. Balderas wants more. Ugh. Oh, we also took this guy, Biondro Leando. Uh, Twins series fans will know that I had him uh, in my save. He was a much better player, but he's pretty good in this save as well. So, uh, almost 24 years old, um, reliever, hasn't pitched above high A. I'm going to give him a shot. Uh, we'll see what happens with him. So, let's go back to international... Oops, that's not where I wanted to go. Alright, so Baldurus, I'm gonna I'm gonna just give you that because whatever. I have the money to spend. Kind of brand is for an ankle. I wonder what the story of that was. I'm sure it came up here. Oh, off field injury. Tempting to tempting but missing a high five with a teammate. That's how the heck do you sprain your ankle doing that? Um, okay, well we got Balderas. So whatever, we're just gonna call it there because uh, it's not coming up up here, and I don't feel like looking for it. And I don't think we actually have any money to spend. We need a hitting coach still down in here. Like this guy, he has good mechanics. He's been the hitting coach for the Stampede. Quite the demotion here going down to rookie ball, but. Okay, we're going to sum up to spring training or probably to opening day and come right back because this is probably boring as hell. All right, so just wanted to check in. It's opening day uh, in 2028. Preseason predictions. Let's see the AL here. No team expected to win 90 games um, in any of the four divisions. Going down to the National League, um, you have Phillies in the East, Reds in the North, Giants in the West, and... Diamondbacks in the south. We're predicted to finish two games behind them. And our division looks really strong once again. So uh, top hitters, Zach Veen and Miguel Blyce, Jackson Churio, Jose Ramirez all make it on this list. Uh, is Tatis back at shortstop? Interesting. Okay. Um, and top pitchers, Kodai Senga is on there for us. So see how the roster sh shook up. Uh, Drew Romo wound up getting hurt right at the end of spring. Uh, three to four weeks he'll be out. I think this is like his first injuries with us. Uh, yeah, he's been pretty much an Iron Man. So uh, that'll push Palma into the starting job. Don't love that, but uh, we signed Travis Darno to be a backup for just a couple weeks, and uh, we'll figure out what happens after that. But um, Juan Guerrero out of options, so he'll make the squad for now. Um, definitely a guy if, um, you know, if he doesn't hit, I'm okay getting rid of him. 
Uh, there was no trades for him, so I just decided to keep him. Uh, the last guy off the roster was uh, Cody Schreier. Um, the thing I like about Guerrero is he's not a good defender in the infield, but he can play some infield. So he'll back up there for the moment. Um, and then besides that, Langford, Betancourt, Betancourt will be the DH platoon again. And uh, Besides that, pretty much all as expected. Rotation will go Senga Steel. Reinwald, Garcia, and Witt um, as our starting five. Bullpen, Lang, and Rodriguez in the back end again. Then Oliveras, Efros, Owens, Cleveland, Chevilli, and Max Meyer uh, out of the bullpen to start the year. Uh, of course, this can change pretty much constantly. So, you know, these three guys in the, in the rotation, you know, short leash for them. Uh, Garcia had a really bad spring, so... You know, really short leash for him, but Witt and Ryan Waldo want to get some time in there, you know, for like a full season here. Uh, you know, Witt, Witt has been like, I don't know. I don't know what to expect out of him at this point. He was the ninth overall pick in 2023. He's now 25 years old. Ryan Wald's 24. Uh, yeah, we should have to let these guys figure it out. So, opening day, we will play at Los Angeles, division rivals, and I need to add... Darno to my 40 man. Okay. Opening day. You lose 5 to 8. Uh, a lot of hits around here for the offense. Looks like we had 10 hits as a team, but um, Senga has a good start. But Lang and Rodriguez cannot get the job done. Let's go through the full series. <clears throat> um, so we win 9 to 4 in game 2. Update to some scouting. Um, Brayden Holcomb's making some progress. Love to see that. Uh, Chris Wood is looking exciting at this point. He was a third rounder back in 2026. Um, you can see his scouting <clears throat> has gone crazy. Um, yeah, we, we've made a lot of progress with Chris Wood, so excited about him. But uh, we win game two of the season. Ramirez, a couple of hits this one. Oh, I forgot uh, Zach Veen got suspended for the first four games of the year. So that's why Blaise is bad in second. Meadows in the lineup. Um, another good day for the offense. And uh, Justin Steele, a good start. So we look to take the series here against LA, and we win 7-1. to one. Meadows has a really awesome series, uh, picking up six hits. Uh, Churio, a couple of hits, and uh, Reinwald, a really good start. So that'll wrap up episode 13 here, I believe. Um, and thank you very much for watching, and we will catch you next time. Goodbye.